Karl Rove, also known as the architect for the role he played in President George W. Bush's 2000-2004 campaigns, was recently in Georgia. He was promoting his book, Courage and Consequence. I had the honor of speaking with him, everything from his views on recent legislation to his book. What kind of responses have you been getting? Oh, really good. I mean, that's, uh, the book has done quite well. The publisher is very happy with it. Uh, uh, I'm in the midst of, or towards the tail end of a three-month-long uh, book tour, which I may be dead at it. There is at the end of it, <laughs> uh, about 110 cities in 90 days, so keeping me on the run. What's been your favorite city so far to visit? Well, I had a very weird experience in Destin, Florida. I have a sort of a beach house down there, and uh, we did an afternoon book signing on a Monday afternoon. They sold out the book in the in the Barnes and Noble where we were. They shuttled people across the street to the Books a Million, about a half a mile away, they, they, to buy books and then come back and stand in line. That got sold out. They sold out all the books there, and they then descended upon Walmart about a mile or so away, bought all the books there, people stood in line to get them signed. I spent three hours doing it, and at the end of it I was signing book plates because the three local bookstores had all run out, so it's a lot of fun. Rove made a stop in Gwinnett to sign books. Fans of all ages were excited to meet one of America's top political strategists. Just the fact that he was here in town, just knew I wouldn't regret coming to meet him, and uh, also a chance of getting my son to meet him, and hopefully it'll make an impression on him for um, for his generation and uh, as he grows this will hopefully make an impact on him. What was your goal when you were writing these? Well, to set the record straight, uh, you know, to be, uh, to give us candid a view of what actually went on and to, you know, back it up. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty, you know, hefty book. It's 521 pages, about 40 some odd pages, I think, of footnotes. But I wanted people to be able to say, hear what the argument was, hear what actually happened and know where I got the information and if they wanted to agree with it or accept it, that was their business. Well, there have been a, there were a lot of controversies during President Bush, right? His sure. during his term. Controversy and over years. Do you feel like this is sort of your way to be like, look, this is why this is why we did what we needed to do, sure. whether you agree with it or sure, not? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, I also wanted to call the hand and blow the whistle on those who said we did things. For reason when they knew that that was not the case. I mean, the, the biggest example is the effort by Democrats starting on July 15th of 2003 to say Bush lied about WMD in Iraq. The first five people to make that charge. On the 15th, it was Ted Kennedy in a speech, Tom Daschle in a uh, news conference. The next day was John Kerry, John Edwards, both of whom were running for president, and Jane Harmon, the ranking Democrat on House Intelligence Committee. All five of those people had looked at the same a national intelligence estimate Bush had, and had come to the same conclusion that Saddam had WMD and was a threat. Four of the five voted for the war authorization resolution. Kennedy was the, the lone dissenter, but even he said Saddam had WMD and was a threat. He said we could just take care of it by something short of force. According to Rove, Democrats used the war in Iraq to hurt President Bush's campaign in the 2004 election. You know, perhaps one of the most egregious examples was Senator Bob Graham of Florida, ranking, yeah. the, ranking, the, the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee who got a letter signed by Democrats and Republicans before the Iraq war that said Saddam had WMD, he's a threat to the region and the security of our country. You must move sooner rather than later. Stop dawdling, Mr. President. And a year later saying Bush ought to be impeached because Bush had said Saddam had WMD. Well, Bush deserved to be impeached over there. What did Bob Graham deserve to have happen to him? So to me it was one of the great, I mean, it was so cynical. In a time of war, let's undermine confidence in the commander in chief so we can win, so we can win election. I thought it was uh, despicable. So what did you do to strategize well, we his... Talk, we talked about it inside the White House and, and you know, sort of like, well, let, we, let's not do that. Let's not, we, don't, we, should, we shouldn't worry about this. But if you get in the, you know, if you wrestle with a pig, you'll get muddy, you know. Uh, we don't want to relitigate the past. Let's just stay focused on the future. And, uh, you know, that's all well and good, but uh, it, this hurt. It hurt badly. And uh, the president should not have, uh, you know, he should have struck back, and we didn't. And when we failed to do so, it was a problem. With the primary so close, July 20th, Rove gave his insights. How do you think the Republican Party is going to fare in the November election? Well, it's going to be a good year for Republicans and a bad year for Democrats. Since World War II, the average number of seats lost in the House in a midterm election are 24, and in the Senate, 4. And I think losses in the Senate for the Democrats will be twice as big, probably 8 seats or more. And uh, when it comes to the House, if the election were held today, I think the Republicans would pick up at least 35 seats and could take control of the House. Remember, these elections are relatively close, even though there are big changes that happen from them. In 2006, for example, 
if you take the 15 closest contests that flip control from the Republicans to the Democrats, they're settled by 27,000 votes combined out of nearly like 81 or 82 million votes cast. So little changes can bring about huge, you know, little, little differences in votes can bring about big changes in the outcomes. So now President Obama just put his support behind Representative Hank Johnson here, mm -hmm. and he represents District 4, I believe. Right. Um, do you think that hurts or helps? Because well, it, it helps, particularly in the Democratic primary. I mean, uh, Johnson's most vulnerable in the Democratic primary. He's had eccentric behavior, as, as everybody in the state knows. And the question is whether or not he can be defeated in the, in the, in the primary. And having the support of the President of the United States helps you there. Let's remember, the president has limited coattails, however. He appeared five times last fall for the two candidates for governor in New Jersey and California. It's an unprecedented use of presidential, of presidential calendar for candidates in those two off-year elections, and both of them lost, one of them by 18 points uh, you know, after uh, Obama carried Virginia and the Commonwealth by six. So you believe that his endorsements are hurting? Well, it hurts in a general election. It sure helps in a primary mm -hmm. inside the Democratic Party. Okay. One issue Rove is really fired up about is the immigration law recently passed in Arizona. What are your thoughts on the immigration law that was just passed in Arizona? Um, I understand why Arizona did it, because it's the weak point on the border and they've got all kinds of problems with, uh, with drug related, primarily drug-related violence, and uh, so I understand why they passed it. I, I, I worry about the efficacy of it. That is to say, it is so tightly drawn, it's so narrowly drawn, you, you know, only if there is an, you know, somebody's been arrested, detained or stopped for another reason, and only if then the officer uh, develops a reasonable suspicion that that person is not a U.S. citizen, can he ask immigration status. So I'm not certain how many people are going to get caught in that. How many people are going to be pulled, you know, how many illegals are going to be, you know, arrested, detained or stopped for another reason and then have a reasonable suspicion developed that they're illegal. So I'm, I'm not certain how, you know, a year from now people are going to say, well, how many people were affected by this? And it's going to be a modest number, I think. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the critics of the bill are absolutely wrong, and I, I, I particularly fault the president here in depicting this as a bigoted and racist law. It's not. It specifically prohibits the officer using uh, uh, race or national origin as a basis on which to criticize or on a basis on which to ask for immigration status. And it's narrowly drawn. The federal law, for example, allows federal agents to, to inquire about immigration status on a much lower, looser standard. So if the federal law is okay, well then why is not the state law, which is even more carefully drawn? Or put another way, if the Arizona law is racist and bigoted, then why is a looser federal law not racist and bigoted as well? Neither, it, and this is all politics. I fault the president for, for, in essence, trying to inflame passions inside the Latino community for one reason and one reason only, and that's to you know, get votes in the November election. Mm -hmm. Encouraging consequence, Rove talks about his time and his role while serving the United States. Can you tell me about your biggest accomplishment during your term well, with I, President I, Bush? Well, you know, I think, I, 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 look, I helped superintend two races for the presidency, you know, sort of quarterback those. but. but when you work inside the White House, you realize that it's not anyone, you know, it's not your personal success or your, some, their personal failures, but, but personal successes, and, you know, that doesn't happen. I mean, you know, I, I'm responsible for mistakes. It was the White House itself that was responsible for successes, and that's the way it is because it's a very complex uh, place to work and with remarkably gifted people, and uh, all of them serving for the right reason, which is to, you know, help the country and to serve a president whom they had enormous respect. On behalf of the Gwinnett Broadcasting Company, we would like to thank Mr. Rowe for spending the afternoon speaking with us. We would also like to thank Sean Hanley for his part in putting together such an exclusive interview. In Buford, Laura Holm, GBC News.